vast waves poets muse of old I kind of got a winter vibe off of your music in yeah. general do you do you like this time of year do you think your music is suited to this time of year um I do love this time of year my if people ask me like what my unpopular opinion is that other people will scoff at, it is uh, that I like winter better than summer in Iowa, at least where I've lived. Some people really hate that because obviously it gets pretty cold in the Iowa winter. Um, but yeah, I feel like I'm always a little warm. And so in the winter, it's great because it's pretty cold outside. Um, and I love, yeah, like the kind of the, even as my music would, would present kind of the vibe of winter, uh, a little more toned down and cool and chill with a fireplace, some coffee, whatever. So yeah, I feel like I certainly love winter, fall as well, which is shorter than winter, unfortunately. Um, and so yeah, I think I definitely write with that kind of a season in mind, for sure. When thunder, rough and roaring, tears the forest from its source. Uh, one of the albums that you cited as a big influence on you is another one that I think of as kind of a cold weather album. That would be uh, the Bon Iver album, oh, Forever, yeah. Forever Ago. Is that the record that kind of opened the floodgates? Oh, for you? definitely, definitely. Yes. I remember it was, I was doing like an internship working from home in college and would just listen to music all day. And it came upon that and I tried to listen to it before but hadn't really got into it. And I remember listening through it just top to bottom and being like... I think this is the music I was made to listen to. I just loved kind of the vibe of it and um, kind of the mystery of Bon Iver's lyrics and his vocals and stuff. And um, so yeah, I feel like that kind of opened me into the indie folk genre, um, as vague as it is. And then in listening to that sort of music was the first time I thought, I think I could like write some music like this, you know? I feel like this kind of is what I enjoy listening to, but also could could start to make. You uh, recently published a guest column for the uh, mm. Bluegrass Situation, which includes a Spotify playlist that you yeah. curated. And I want to get this right here. Uh, you said you were drawn to songs that ask you to make <laughs> sense of things and also that tell stories and ask questions. Yeah. Uh, do you try to ask questions in your own music? <clears throat> oh, definitely. Yes. Um, that was actually one of the freeing kind of aspects, I don't know if this would be inherent to indie folk music, but I found when I got into Bon Iver and a lot of the, the music that I was liking, it was very mysterious. It kind of made you wonder like, what is this song talking about? Um, and it made me think about life, about death, everything in between. And so I feel like that was very freeing to me because I felt before I was writing music, I wasn't really interested in it because I didn't think I had any like answers or wisdom to provide to the world. I was like, I think there's enough of that out there and I don't really know what to add. Um, so realizing that you can write songs that are just kind of ambiguous, not meaningless, but um, kind of just honest thoughts of like, I don't know what I think about this. And here's a question that I'm asking, you know? So I think that was very freeing to me in the first, you know, I don't know, two or three EPs that I released, even still now, most of my songs, the, the peak of them or like the core of the lyrics are questions, which I don't know, I never like kind of planned to do that, but as I write, that's kind of what naturally comes out is not as much of like a, here's what I've learned about the world and a great answer, even like love songs. I'm just like asking questions or like speaking in kind of ambiguities. Uh, you mentioned you got a few EPs. The new one is out now. It's called Songs for Davis. I, just a couple of weeks ago, if I'm not yeah, yeah. mistaken. Uh, yeah. yeah, November 19th. Uh, how long have, when did you write these songs? Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so I wrote them. Um, all in 2020. So between kind of May 2020 and September or so, <clears throat> I wrote kind of like a whole album's worth of songs um, that I'm kind of releasing in two sister EPs. So that first one is the songs from Davis from this month. And um, yeah, so I wrote them all kind of during the pandemic, not necessarily about the, you know, the start of the pandemic, but I felt like I was home and for a while I wasn't really making much music, wasn't writing much, and then started to kind of write around some more questions and thoughts of existence and life. And within, it kind of was like a snowballing effect. I wrote one and then a few weeks later wrote another and then like two weeks later wrote one and then within a week wrote another and then it kind of just sped up at the end and I had this project of songs that 
I never really expected to write, but they kind of started rolling out. So it was all in 2020, but it was actually kind of what I was aiming and trying to grow to before the pandemic hit. So, um, it worked out really well. I, I kind of, I started making music in college, uh, no idea what I was doing, just like in my bedroom with like a cheap microphone, trying whatever. And it was a lot of fun and very creatively fulfilling, but the product was a reflection of me not really knowing what I'm doing. You know, it's not the, the most pristine quality. And so um, since then I've gone to studios and had a few different producers and um, worked with some great people that taught me a lot. And so, I've be, being able to learn from them and then combine that with kind of the just creativity of being at home and not having the, the stress of a, a studio time or um, whatever else was really, really fulfilling to just be able to get back to kind of the roots of like experimenting uh, on my laptop and then, um, but actually knowing a little bit more what I was doing this mm -hmm. time around. You mentioned having another EP's worth of songs mm -hmm. just about ready to go. What else is next for you? Are you playing shows? Um, I don't have any shows on the horizon right now, um, mostly just recording and writing. So yeah, I have um, <clears throat> the song Bleak Midwestern Win Winter uh, that was on this EP. I've got an acoustic version of that coming out this month in December um, with a special guest on there, which is great. And then, uh, yeah, after that, it'll be this next batch of songs. And so just got those um, final uh, masters like the day this last EP came out. So it's kind of uh, confusing mentally, but, um, so that, I feel like that's kind of what I've been wrapping up recently. And then beyond that, uh, yeah, I guess the calendar in the future is a little open for whatever's next. And hold me when the winter's all that's in sight. By the hand, take me to lamplight. Be the melting snow of springtime. Is cereal soup? <laughs> uh, I don't think so. In my mind, soup's kind of warm. So you could probably make the ar argument that oatmeal is soup. I think soup but. requires steps. Like it's mm. got to be prepared. Yes. There's not a lot of preparation in cereal. Yeah, that's true. That's true. Yeah. It's kind of just two things put together. Sure. Yeah. All right, Davis, that's thank great. you so much. <laughs> yeah, thank you, Tony. <laughs> <laughs>